After finally managing to get yourself to Kibetsu High's nurse's office, Kayaku and I were now sitting beside one another as a school nurse attends to Kayaku's wounds. My wounds, as were already cleared and bandaged up, as I was given a cup of cold water to settle myself down. A large wet, <laughs> large wet, a large white square bandage was on the center of my forehead, and smaller bandages were taped into the scratches onto the side of my head. I was curious as to why the school nurse looked huh. awfully familiar to Shinobu, but my question was answered as she identi identified herself to be Kanakocho, Shinobu's older sister. It reminds me that Shinobu did mention that her older sister was a nurse, so this must be her. Hmm. You must be the girl all the Hashira have seen to be all interested in. Yen, yeah, am I right? Kanai beams. She dabs the alcohol swab into, uh, yeah, onto, sorry, Kaiku's forehead a little too roughly. It was almost as if she was doing it on purpose. I can see why everyone's so interested in you. You're so cute. I can feel myself fluster at Kane's compliment. Thank you. I responded shyly. Suddenly, Kayaku's loud voice makes me jump. Oi, you, you're a nurse, aren't you? Why are you being so rough? If I remember correctly, Shinobu squints at me. She completely ignores the grouchy Kayaku in front of her. You were the girl that Tanjiro and Zenitsu had brought to the mall. We all met together with the Kazuki. She grumbled, making Ka Kayaku exclaim, Hey, it's almost done, so stop squirming, Kane sternly says, grabbing a hold of the Kazuki's head and cleans the side of the wound. This silences the Kazuki up. Though I am curious, Yen. Kane starts. Uh, yes? Why the two of you suddenly in here with the same head injury? Um. My eyes dart towards Kayaku, who just rolls his eyes. He opens his mouth to respond, but I was beaten to it. Uh, Kayaku saved me. Yes, he saved me from some people. Hmm? His eyes go large. What the hell are you talking about? Yep, Kayaku saved me from these bad people who wanted to rob me no i didn't yes you did no i didn't the two of you go bickering off however i could see kane's eyes start from me then to <laughs> sorry then to kayaku then back to me on repeat i couldn't tell whether or not she had believed me especially since kayaku's abruption wasn't well looked upon at the, by the hashira our reputation wasn't looked well by the hashira but one thing was for sure. I really didn't want Kayaku to be blamed for something I did. I wanted to create this better image of Kayaku so people wouldn't judge him or think poorly of him. However, more importantly, I wanted to steer Kayaku so d clear of that disgusting route that my so-called parents walked down. The route of constant drinking and smoking that led to them mistreating me. So, no matter how much of an asshole Kayaku is, this is for his sake. You. You did help me, though. Suddenly, the sounds of footsteps entering the office makes my head turn. I find a familiar pink-haired Kazuki standing beside Kanao with a note as he clenched his left shoulder. You again? She makes a face at Akaza. Me again. Akaza sighs. He seems tired. Was it because of basketball practice or because he had to see a Hashi remember like Kane Kanao or Kane? It's Kane, it's Kane, it's Kane. I gotta remind I gotta remind myself that it's Kane. Sorry. You might as well just live in here. Kane gets from her chair and opens up a nearby freezer. She takes out an ice pack and wraps it wraps some paper towels to lessen its coldness. Yeah, yeah, Akaza grumbles, his eyes looking around the room and then falling on me. He blinks with a sinister grin grows on his face. First year. His eyes then trail from me to Kayaku sitting beside me, making his smile disappear. His eyes go dark once he sees Kayaku's injury. Kayaku. Akaja. Kayaku grunts. His arms crossed. 
He seemed irritated to see Akaza. Why? You can still move, right? Akaza's eyes down at Kayaku, who slightly nods. I glare at the two, confused. What the heck were these guys on about? Kayaku noticed me staring, and then causing him to let out a annoying tisk, scratching the head of his hair vigorous oh back of his hair vigorously as he er erupted his hands i'm out of here see you akaza don't be late akaza replies taking a seat down at kayaka's seat next to me wait kane exclaims but kayaku was already gone she must the breath hmm. sure i was finished with him but if he com oh, collapses out of nowhere that's not on me she hands akaza the ice pack in which he thanks her Rest for a while, you two, Kane instructs. If you're feeling better, feel free to leave. No need to tell me, okay? With that, she excuses herself to some paperwork on the computer in the room next door. Akasa plops himself down beside me, letting out an exhaustion sigh. What were you and him in for? Kayaku saved me from some robbers, I tell the boy. Huh? His eyes widen. No fucking way. That has to be a lie, a joke even. If not even that, de then that definitely wasn't him. I frowned. Just why were people seeing Kayaku like this? Oh. Sorry. All their p base assumptions on him were all poor. Why do you say that? Kayaku is not the type to only ever do something in it if it benefits him. Kay oh, Akaza laughs. If things ever turn dirty, he's the first to run with his tail between his legs. His eyes slightly, my eyes slightly widen. Why have I never thought that Kayaku is the type of person? But that explains why so many people judge him this way. But I didn't want people to think poorly of Kayaku, especially since I think he's a pretty good kid deep down. I want to believe that he just wasn't shown, or hasn't shown it yet. Well, I'm sure Kayaku has his reasons, I quietly murmur. Awkward sense passes by as I try to think of something to talk about. That was when the question of Akaza being in here raises. Um, what are you doing in here, Akaza? Did you hurt yourself during basketball practice? Oh. Akaza looks at his left shoulder. I didn't necessarily hurt myself, just some t teammates. For whatever reason, mistaken me as a basketball. He lets out a loud scoff, giving me a knowing look. Be honest, do I look like a basketball to you? I'm not orange around. <sighs> I burst into fits of laughter to think that people would even mistake an Akaza for a basketball. How is that even possible? Hey, don't laugh. It's not funny, Akaza exclaims. Anyways, this was... It wasn't the first time it happened. That's why, at this point, oh, sorry. at this point, the nurse is hard of seeing me. Hmm. <clears throat> Though there must be some reason why your teammates do that. I squint at Agatha, thinking of reasons why. That was when my eyes fell on some distinct markings on his left arm that leads up to his shoulder, and even under his bl black tank top torso oh, uh, uh, towards his torso these odd black lines could they have been what caused people to mistake him as a basketball hmm oh Akaza noticed me staring at the markings that his voice falters making me look at him curiously what is it Akaza looks away from me however he responds a hand traces his left arm with black markings their tattoos. Tattoos? I repeat. I glance back at the left tattoo, a little confused as to why Akaza had such strange tattoos in the first place. They're unique, I lightly put. However, Akaza chuckles at my words. You can just say it. He leans back in the waiting chair. They're ugly, I know. I, I was slightly offended that Akaza had assumed that I was thinking something like that. But he wasn't exactly wrong. They, oh my god, sorry. They weren't exactly the prettiest. 
uh, oh, they weren't exactly the prettiest tattoos I've ever seen. It's fine, first year. He chuckles. You wouldn't be the first to think that. What are their meanings? Meanings? You know, those tats must be some back. They must have some backstory, right? Why else would they be so different from other tattoos? Akaza goes silent. His eyes full, making me worry. Oh shit! Sorry, it decided to go berserk on me. If I had to say, oh my god! If I said something interesting, in investable. I'm sorry. You don't have to tell me, Akaza sorry maybe that can be another story for another time first year akaza looks back at me plastering a small smile he suddenly places an ice pack on his left arm before a half court or in this case a half room with the ice pack with there with where he was sitting my god the melted ice pack lands perfectly into the trash can with a satisfied thump and the crowd goes wild <laughs> akaza cheers for himself i giggle at akaza's childish actions but the sound of him suddenly getting up stops me he picks up his backpack and flips it over his sh shoulders before wi yeah winding back his left arm to stretch it well then i'm going to be heading out surprised but that akaza had quickly healed but your shoulder it's fine Besides, he lowers his voice a whisper. The nurse's office keeps me out, especially the nurse. Akaza turns his back towards me and gives me a wave. See you tomorrow. Wait! I exclaim, stopping the Kazuki member. It was no doubt that I wanted to get to know Akaza more. I felt as if out of all the... Sorry, I'm sorry for yawning so much. If I could get... Oh. As I felt out of all of the Kazuki members, Akaza was the most reasonable one. And maybe if I could get to know Akaza more, I must understand what's up with the other members. I'm leaving too. We can walk out together. I get up from the chair. Oh? Akaza turns his head. Your head's better? Yep. I sling my backpack over my shoulders. Wait, are you going to basketball practice? Nah. Coach led me off for the day after that what happened. Aka suggestions to his head towards the do door. Besides, I'm sure he's giving the team an earful about the basketball incident, but he does the same thing too. Akaza makes a face. The coach? My eyebrows lift up as I follow behind Akaza out of the office. He's also mistaken my head multiple times as the basketball. Akaza shakes his head. Half the time, I'm sent to the nurse's office because of him. I break into fits of laughter just thinking of this. Hey! Akaza exclaims, the two of us making our way down the hall. As the sound of me laughing and Akaza's yelling at me echoes. Once outside the building, we pass by a group of students who I assume were in an after school club. And that was when I noticed Akaza's yelling had abruptly stopped. My eyes trail up to Akaza staring at this girl who was chattering with her group of friends. The girl had long black hair, tied in a ponytail and bright pink eyes. She seemed like a bright, happy girl. That girl makes eye contact with Akaza, in which she quickly looks away. The group walks past us and Akaza looks off with pained eyes. Did Akaza know her? I ask myself. I was thinking of countless scenarios as to what that girl That the girl could have meant to Agatha. We continue walking, but silence loomed over us like a dark cloud. Finally, we reached the front gates of the school. Where are you headed to, Akaza? I peered over to his distant face, but he was lost in thought. Akaza? I say once more. Uh, sorry. He blinks, rubbing the back of his head. What was that? Where are you heading? I repeat. Uh, over there. Akaza points, pointing in the same direction as where my house was. He lived in the same direction, at least. <gasps> Me too, then. I nod. I live in that direction, too. Oh, you want to walk home together? He suggested, assuming that was what I had wanted. However, I shake my head no. 
We can do that after. Oh, yeah. I wave my head dis dismissively. You're sad, aren't you, Argaza? No, I'm not. Where'd you get that? Uh, that girl back there. Hmm. I gave a knowing look, making his lips form into a thin line. But it's okay. I won't butt into your problems. I wave my hands once more. Instead, I know something that will cheer you up. Oh, wait, cheer you right up. What? Some favorite, your favorite dessert. You definitely can't go wrong with some, your favorite dessert. I huffed a proud breath. Your favorite dessert? Argus of frowns. Isn't that a dessert? It's the most heavenly thing on this planet. I cross my arms, correcting Akaza's words. I don't think I've ever had your favorite dessert. I shriek my in heart. My eyes widen and grabbing Akaza's arm for support. Oh, yeah. You! I pointed an accusing finger at him, making him blink. You're get we're getting to that cafe ASAP! What? In a flash, I grab his right hand and drag the both of us to one place where they had the best, your favorite dessert, ever. Oh my. The usual Melbury sisters with large white bandages at the center of your forehead. Are you okay? His eyes start from you, then Akaza accompanying you. Akaza shrugging, shrugs, rep replying he knew nothing while you responded. I just fell, that's all. You grinned through your sh lie. Huh. Sure, the male breeze was nice. And all but barely knew much of him, so telling him everything about your injury was quite odd. Akaza looked at you, clearly, no clearly knowing what you're doing. Well then, let me have some, your favorite dessert. Your usual male waiter asks with a, oh, well then, let's get, let me guess, some of your favorite dessert. Your usual male waiter asks you with a smile. <laughs> you know me all too well. The male barista writes down your order happily and no, on his notepad before raising his head, oh shit, before raising his head to ask what Akaza would like. I'll have what she's having. The pink head, bo head boy nods. With that, the male barista leaves. Akaza was curious as to what your relationship with this barista person was. So, he decided to ask, um, him. Well, actually, I barely even know him. You shrug. I only ever talked to him in this cafe and all those times. It's just him taking my order from your favorite dessert. At this point, he pretty much knows me as the girl who just eats your favorite dessert. Ah, uh, Akaza nods, getting some sort of guess to your odd relationship. Also, why didn't you order anything else aside from your favorite dessert? You found recalling Akaza's order. If you didn't like it, you could give the fav your favorite dessert to me and at least have something else to eat. Since I've never had it before, Akaza says, it's nice to try something new. His eyes dart away from your, from yours oddly. You knew something was up with Akaza ever since the two of you saw that pink-eyed girl back at school. You seem reclusant to try it. Still, you shouldn't force yourself to eat something you don't like. You per pa yeah, purse your lips. Although I don't think anyone in their right mind would say that they didn't like your favorite dessert. Akaza blinks. Oh, Akaza breaks from a grin hearing this. Maybe I might be that someone. Then your taste buds must be broken. Should go by once if that were your case. Akaza smiles down as his eyes cross over the menu still in front of him. His fingers was tracing over one specific menu item before, which made you curious. Strawberry grape, three dollars. The silence between the two of you was unbearable, making you decide to un decide to unfront and ask Akaza of the menu item. Did you want that? You lean forward towards the table, gazing down at the menu item across the table. I can ask the barista. No, it's fine. 
Akaza quickly plasters a smile. However, you see right through it. That big smile. She loves crepes. That's all. The mentioning of she makes you think of the pink-eyed girl from before. That had to be the she. Akaza's POV. I haven't been back to this cafe since I had broken up with, I'm going to butcher it, Ko Koyu, no, Ko Koyuki, Koyuki. Just being in this cafe only reminds me of Koyuki. I couldn't just say no to Yin, but maybe I should have. I hate it here. All those memories of Ko Koyuki just keep coming back. Koyuki deserves better. She doesn't deserve someone like me to be by her side. She's too pure for me to stain. Someone like me, who is a co associated with gangs, the Kazuki, and even Muzan, will only create bigger troubles for Koyuki and her father. Worst of all, it only gets worse as time goes on. As much as I love her, I had to end our relationship. I did it for her sake. Your, fav your favorite dessert. The male barista from before returns with two plates of your favorite dessert. He places them down with it and smiles to Yin. And please enjoy. Thank you, as always. Yin beams up at the barista, who returns the thanks. Oh, thank you, with a smile. To think that these two were only ever met through orders. Their relationship is very unique, in a way. Yin quickly takes a fork and begins digging into it. Sorry if it doesn't have a fork in it. I take my fork in hand and take a bite of the dessert. However, the dessert fails to meet my expectations. This, your favorite dessert, tastes normal. I mean, I guess it should taste like your favorite dessert. Either way, but there was nothing special about it. No flavors that would make me call it some special unique dessert. I swallowed the bite as my thought drifted back towards Yen had said. When your taste buds would be broken, should, sh should go buy new ones. My lips curl into a smile, thinking of the absolute in her words. I really couldn't taste what was so special about your favorite dessert. Maybe your taste buds were broken. Just as I was placing down my fork, I hear an hmm from across the table. I look to find Yin beaming brightly to herself as she cupping one of her cheeks in awe. Her favorite dessert was half of what it started. When did she couple it all up? She opens her eyes and goes for another eager bite for the dessert. My eyes suddenly widened as I can see Koyuki. The sight of Yin eating happily makes me snap out of these thoughts of Kiyuki on her first date. She was happily eating away the strawberry crepe I bought for her. Flashback. Akaza and Koyuki's first date. Ah, Hakuji, there's no need to waste money on me. Koyuki huffs an angry breath. She was always like this. Even when dating, she hated me spending money on her. But it's her first date. At least let me buy you something. I make a face at her. First date or not, you know how many times I've told you to save and spend your money on yourself. She, she crushes her arms, her pink eyes softening at mine. I don't need anything, Hakuji. And when I already have one thing I've always wanted, I blink a little confused. What is it? Ha Kuyuki looks away, her cheeks flustered, and her hands were clasped together under the table. It's you, silly. My eyes widened. I could feel my face burning at her words. I, you... I speak. I couldn't speak properly. Moment after, cut caught off guard. I quickly pick up the menu to hide my red face. And that was when I noticed that strawberry crepe was on the menu. My first instinct was that Koyuki's outfit matched with the dessert. Therefore, I ordered it before she could decline. Had you? Had you? Yeah, it's had you. You've never had it before, right? No, but no buts. Today's the day you t try something new. And besides, if you don't finish it, I'll eat it. Hajuki. By the way, I think I'm saying it right. I don't know. I'm so, I would be so sad if I'm not saying it right. It tastes amazing. Hakujin. I think. Hakujin. 
Kayuki exclaims. A hand was on her cheek as she beams brightly. Seeing her happy makes me happy. Here, she holds out her fork full of the dessert. Hmm? Try some. I... I feel bad that I'm the only one eating. And besides, sharing is caring. Especially when it's with my boyfriend. Oh, boyfriend? I repeat, no amount of words could describe the happiness I was feeling. I felt at ease. I leaned towards Kayuki's fork beside me, and Kayuki feeds me the dessert. It was sweet. I swallowed the bite, and without realizing, I had mumbled, I love you, Kayuki. She looked surprised that I had said it out of the blue, but smiled, returning the words that I've never heard before. I love you, too. Hakuji. I'm just gonna say that. Yin wasn't Kayuki. She wasn't and will never be like her. No one could ever be like Kayuki. Ooh, the sounds of the haired colored hair girl happily enjoying the dessert takes me out of my thoughts about Kayuki as Yin smiles, causes me to realize, despite that favorite colored dish, oh, not favorite colored, favorite dessert was bland and not had no special taste. Seeing Yin enjoy it was so much, because this favorite sweet aftertaste to a raise was every your favorite dessert like this, or was it because I was eating it with someone other than Koyuki, someone this excited like Yin?